What's up, folks? My name is Trevi. Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise, and welcome to another datasheet deep dive. This is the video series where we take one datasheet from Warhammer 40k and talk about it at great length. And this time, we're going to be talking about the Tyranid Lictor. Now, this topic selection comes with a little bit of a story. A uh, long time ago, way too long ago, in fact, sort of an embarrassing amount of time ago, I did a poll asking people what Tyranid data sheets they would want me to review. And a lot of people said Carnifexes because those are a fan favorite. And I promise I'm working on the Carnifex video right now. The problem is that I have a lot to say about Carnifexes, so it's ridiculously long. And that means that it also takes a really long time to edit. So I was on the cusp of not actually releasing a video this week, which would have been bad. So I decided to go into the comments and I saw a bunch of people asking to do a deep dive on lictors. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. If you like this style of content, hit that subscribe button and the little bell down below. Do all that YouTube stuff, you know the drill. And let's talk about exactly what we're gonna be covering on this lictor data sheet. Now, first off, as always, we're gonna do a data sheet review. We're gonna talk about all of these stats on the data sheet. Then we're gonna move on and talk about some unit attributes about the lictor, important things on that data sheet that are good to look at in particular. We're also gonna talk about some interesting synergies, both with the Tyranid Codex as a whole, as well as high fleet adaptations that you can use alongside it. We're then gonna talk about specifically how you use lictors on the table. Let's do it, let's dive. So first off, talking about the Lictor's data sheet, and there's a couple things that I think spring out immediately when you look at this profile. First off, 37 points a model. Now that sounds like a lot of points a model until you consider that these are units of a single model. You're not taking, you know, three or five or 10. It's just individual Lictors for a single elite slot in a Tyranid detachment. And that's actually pretty reasonable. I've talked about it a little bit in the past, and I think it's something that often goes overlooked, but individual model units in 40K are super duper powerful. That's because, among other things, in order for your opponent to kill them, they have to dedicate a shooting activation to attack that model. They have to allocate attacks from a unit that's making its ranged attack into that model specifically before they knew how much they know how much damage it's going to be taking which means you can make your opponent attack inefficiently to kill individual model units Let's imagine taking a unit of 10 space marines and trying to kill 10 individual guardsmen on the other side of the table are you going to allocate a single space marine to each one of those guardsmen? You don't know if you're going to miss all your shots or if one guy is going to overperform or something like that. It's very obnoxious. Another reason is that they are perfect for doing things like screening out areas. They actually have the most efficient anti-deep strike aura out of any style of unit. They're good at holding backline objectives if your opponent can't threaten them. They're good at scoring a lot of secondaries. There's a lot of reasons that individual model units are super powerful. So that's great. That is a big power of the Lictor. Also, the next stat we're gonna talk about here, move nine. That's, I mean, surprising to be honest. This guy looks like a warrior and he moves uh, you know, <laughs> another 50% faster. Incredible. We also have a pretty beefy, just standard profile. Two plus weapon skill is actually pretty important. Strength six, so we're wounding toughness three models on twos in melee, which is phenomenal. T4, four wounds is fine. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to kill. Unfortunately, it is saddled with a five plus armor save. And while that can be buffed by the chameleonic skin ability this guy has, eh, it's not really enough to, to allow it to survive more than maybe a couple of bolter shots going into it. Also, three attacks as well is a little bit low. For the style of unit that you kind of want Lictors to be, only three attacks means that they flub their melee a lot, which is too bad. But uh, for only 37 points, you can't really complain, especially at that two plus weapon skill. Now, the Lictor actually has a bunch of melee weapons attached to it. This guy's kind of like a big gene stealer. It has Flesh Hooks, a two-shot gun at Strength User, which means it's coming in at Strength 6, which is pretty good. Again, you're killing Toughness 3 models on 2s. This thing actually becomes sort of a blender when going into a Guardsman squad, which is pretty interesting. The other cool thing about Flesh Hooks is that they're like a super pistol. They can shoot into and out of combat, which is pretty useful. Occasionally, you get a situation where Lictors are going to be able to, you know, pick a model or two out that are engaging another unit, or if it's only engaged by, you know, one or two models, it can kill them and then charge out, for example, and those are all pretty useful. It also has two 
melee profiles it can use either grasping talons or rending claws the rending claws are always better unless you need the two damage on the, the grasping talon because it has that rending ability where sixes to wound become ap4 however having a flat two damage weapon on those grasping talons means that the lictor does not get too bogged down if you're fighting multi-wound enemies if this guy goes into a tactical squad it's not great for him because a bunch of attacks coming back at him with only that five plus save is not amazing but hitting on twos winning on threes and every failed saving throw just killing one of those tactical marines is pretty good and especially if you've already put a shot into those tactical marines or something and there's only a couple left lictors can finish them off they're kind of the scavengers of the battlefield their special abilities and keywords are also incredibly important for how lictors operate on the table first off chameleonic skin gives them plus one save if they are in cover in addition to the normal light cover effect unfortunately this doesn't work on heavy cover it only works against ranged attacks which is too bad and it also doesn't work if they're benefiting from dense cover because you have to have a benefit of cover to your armor saving throw in order for the chameleonic skin to trigger one thing that got eroded out of the lictor data sheet was its natural minus one to be hit that's just gone so i see a lot of people playing lictors as minus one to be hit that's death leaper you're thinking of regular lictors are, do not have a hit penalty at all they only have this chameleonic skin ability the most important ability on their data sheet however is hidden hunter which allows you to put them in reserve and deep strike them on the table anywhere outside of nine inches of enemy models and when they come in they can reroll their charge so making that nine inch charge out of deep strike is actually a bit of a coin flip i think it's about a 45 percenter to get a nine inch charge with a reroll which means that your opponent does actually have to be worried about lictors coming out of reserve if they have important units they don't want tied up for example they can't just leave that unscreened because the lictor coming in and tagging it for a turn could be detrimental to their game plan. Lastly, a Lictor is a single infantry model. It is not character keyworded, which is important. And a lot of people think that they are because they look like characters when you put them on the table. And that means that they are eligible to perform a lot of actions. And they also don't give up really secondaries. Sometimes you can give up, grind them down by losing Lictors. They don't give up assassinate. And that's a really big deal. So with that, let's move on to the unit attributes for the Lictor. What's good about this data sheet? First off, I mentioned it a couple times that infantry keyword on a single model unit is just mm, a chef's kiss what an incredible combination the big thing that that lets you do is do a lot of secondary actions you can do things like drop banners with this guy you can do things like deploy scramblers with this guy and scramblers i think is going to be the number one reason that people are putting lictors in their lists so you can put them in the back of your opponent's deployment zone with that deep strike and immediately perform a deploy scramblers action and get that scrambler in whatever zone that they're in to sort of supplement that they're also really annoying to screen out they're on a 40 millimeter base which isn't enormous and just because of how screening naturally works in ninth edition you do have to be able to fit the entirety of your unit into an area to be able to legally place them because they all set up simultaneously you can't you know place half of them and then decide not to place the other ones and have them be dead like you could in eighth edition you, the entire unit has to be put down all at once and that means that a lot of times people get a little sloppy with their screening because all you have to do is screen out essentially room for one model not to be placed and that's not the case for lictors if a lictor can go in a place it just goes there it doesn't have to worry about any friends coming along with it, which means that your opponent actually has to physically screen out almost the entirety of their deployment zone to not let lictors in. And some people, when they look at two or three lictors in a tyrannid army, they just go, it's fine. I'm not even going to screen. It's too hard to screen lictors. Now, these things together make lictors the perfect utility unit. I've talked about utility units in a previous video I did on competitive list construction, where we talked about the Pentagon of Power, and one point of that Pentagon are utility units. And if you want a perfect example, Example of a utility unit it is a lictor this guy's up there with mandrakes and like space marine infiltrators and some of the most incredible utility style units in the game these little support guys that can go in score your secondary objectives green out your opponent's army just be annoying but on top of that lictors are actually combat effective as well their melee profile isn't phenomenal to be honest but it is good enough and especially against toughness three infantry being able to put those two flesh hook shots down then swing three times hitting on twos winning on twos means that lictors actually mix it up with a lot of really light infantry and especially infantry that's holding your opponent's backline objectives and over the course of a couple turns can actually kill them this makes lictors really important in a kg game where you're really scrapping over objectives because they're going to be able to peel models off of your opponent's army and they're not quite easy enough to kill that your opponent doesn't have to really worry about dealing with them a lot of similar units only have one or two wounds and they go down pretty easily even to last gunfire 
there, but lictors are just resilient enough that you do kind of have to commit a little bit to in order to reliably kill one. Now with that, let's move on to synergies and talk about some abilities and stratagems and high fleet adaptations you can use alongside your lictors to get the most out of them. Now I'm not going to cover every single synergy that's available for lictors because to be honest, they're not that exciting. They're, like I said, just a single infantry who attacks a couple times. So you're not really going to be wasting adaptive physiologies or big psychic powers on single lictors outside of some very specific instances. But they do have a lot of stuff going for them and James Workshop clearly wants you to play them because they have a lot of lictor specific stratagems you can use with them. First off, Surprise Ambush gives you plus one to charge and makes them immune to Overwatch. That means that they only need an eight inch charge out of Deep Strike with a reroll, which is relatively reliable. It's like a 60-ish percent chance, I think, which means if you want to bring in a Lictor and engage something or try to clear out a unit, kill a, a light character or something like that, you can do that relatively reliably for one CP. And it is a way that just for that CP, you can ignore Overwatch. And if you're worried about a very powerful Overwatch, uh, the Lictor can eat that hit for you. Pheromone Trail is another important one. It allows you to bring a unit in from strategic reserve or any reinforcement unit really within six inches of that lictor rather than coming off the table edge normally. Now there's some question regarding exactly how this works mechanically. The lictor has to be on the table and you target it with the pheromone trail stratagem when you bring in a unit from reinforcements. There is an open question on whether strategic reserve units can come in with pheromone trail. The answer is that they can because any unit that begins the game off the table and then enters onto the table is considered a reinforcement. All strategic reserve reserve units are always reinforcements. The part that's confusing to some people is that the reverse is not always true. Not all reinforcement units are strategic reserves. A Lictor is a perfect example of this. They come in as a reinforcement when they use their Hidden Hunter ability to pop in on the table anywhere outside of nine inches of enemies, but that's not strategic reserves. Strategic reserves is specifically the role that you use to come in off the table edge by spending CP during the reserves step of the game. This lets you bring infantry units in and especially ranged infantry is where this works better. Anywhere on the table, not tied to a board edge. Tier units have a lot of very short ranged guns, especially on their infantry units. So being able to bring them in anywhere you need and get angles on your opponent is very important. This is perfect for units like Devour or Termagants, which are really easy to kill and will go down very quickly if they are just dropped on the table in the deployment phase. So being able to put them on the table later on within six inches of that lictor is a big deal. Now keep in mind, this only works on infantry you can't put monsters or anything like that. Invisible Hunter allows you to fall back, shoot, and charge at the Lictor. Not super useful, but occasionally it's going to be good if you are stuck somewhere and want to pull back and then charge to get a secondary objective or something somewhere else. Could be potentially important, so that's one to keep in your mind when you're playing Lictors. And lastly, for the Lictor-specific stratagems, Feeder Tendrils allows you to gain CP by killing enemy characters with a Lictor. Now, generally, you see this stratagem used with Gene Stealers because they are absolutely perfect character killers, just making a billion million attacks and being super fast. Lictors very rarely get to trigger it, but sometimes it does happen. There are some very light support style characters out there that Lictors actually can kill. Consider characters like platoon commanders or missionaries. These characters that you typically fit in an elite slot and are like toughness three with a, a pretty mediocre save where two of those two damage grasping talent swings through that save could kill them. That's where feeder tendrils comes up. So it's another important one to keep in mind if you find yourself in a situation where your Lictor is fighting that style of model. Now, moving on to more general stuff, don't forget metabolic overdrive on the Lictor. That is an important one late game, especially if the Lictor has come in out of deep strike somewhere around the edges of the table, being able to use metabolic overdrive to move it onto objectives or double move it in order to get it in range to deploy scramblers or something like that is super duper important. And with that base move of 18 means that this thing can deploy a scrambler anywhere on the table from 18 inches away, which is wild. You A lot of times, even if your opponent is doing a great job at screening out their deployment zone, you can just drop a bunch of lictors in the middle of the table and if any of one of them survives, they're going to be able to get you a scrambler in your opponent's deployment zone. It's almost impossible to stop. Now, moving on to high fleet adaptations, there are a couple interesting synergies here. Your Mungandr, I think, is the most obvious one. First off, it gives automatic triggers on your chameleonic skin because you're always considered to be in light cover it's always going to give you that trigger and they're always going to be at that three plus cover save which is pretty nice in addition lurking maws the psychic power from jormungandr has good synergy with bringing models in from reserve especially with pheromone trail for example you can lurking maws something important bring in a big unit of 30 devil gaunts or devourer gaunts drop them wholly within six inches of that lictor and then full reroll all of their attack rolls to blow that unit away potentially with a double tap with single-minded annihilation 
and that combo is definitely instigated by the Lictor, allowing them to set up almost anywhere on the table. High Fleet Kraken gives you the ability to permanently fall back and charge and further buffs that sort of ludicrous speed with extra advanced distance. High Fleet Cronus is an interesting synergy. They don't work together very well at all. I mean, sometimes you can reroll your ones with your flesh hooks, which will probably not happen, but Lictors are a perfect model to project deepest shadow up the table since you can drop them in awkward places or start them on the table and run them up ahead of your army. And lastly, High Fleet Gorgon gives it rerolls to wound in the fight phase. Rerolls of one, which makes it perfect at killing those toughest three infantry, given that you're hitting on twos, winning on twos, rerolling ones. Pretty good. Again, only three attacks, though, means he's not going to be killing a large number of infantry, but making those three attacks count is very important. So before we move on to the final verdict, let's talk about how to play Lictors on the table, because that was one of the biggest questions that I saw in those comments is, you know, how do you make this unit functional? And I think if you look at Tyranid list, you'll see a lot of them in the list, and sometimes it's not always clear exactly why. Now, I've touched on it earlier in the video, but Lictors are purely a utility unit, and they are a phenomenal one. They're good for screening, they're good for performing actions, and those are the reasons that Lictors are in your list. For all the things I said earlier in the video, being a single model unit, a non-character unit means you can perform actions. They have a relatively small base, so they're hard to screen. They're fast, so even if they are screened, they can still get up the table to get those secondary objectives. These are all benefits that Lictors have, and all in a relatively inexpensive points cost. So generally speaking, games with Tyranids, you're gonna have the deploy scramblers and or engage on all fronts secondary objectives. So you want to reserve your lictors in those situations. And when they come in, put them in corner areas, areas around the sides of the table where they're gonna be difficult to reach. Those areas are usually the most difficult to screen out. So that's where they'll have space to drop in. And that means that even when they come in and get that engage on all fronts of the turn that they come in or get that deploy scramblers action off, they're gonna be annoying to take out. If you can also put them in cover, that works great as well. There are gonna be some matchups and some games where you don't necessarily have those defensive objectives. And in those situations where you're playing very defensively, keeping them on the table in your deployment zone is important. That's especially if you need them for turn one actions like raise the banners high. Being able to have a Lictor place your banner instead of something like a character, like a Neurothrope, or even one of your larger units that you'd might rather be advancing up the table is important and can make your entire list function a little bit more efficiently. They can also screen out your backline really well, just putting a Lictor in each corner of your deployment zone can make it very difficult to get good deep strikes back on you. But if you don't have plans for them in round one, I almost always recommend reserving them. So even if you don't have any secondary objectives that Lictors can interact with, you should almost always put them in reserve. Being that they have all these bonuses to charge out of Deep Strike that are difficult to screen out and they're sort of annoying to kill once they come in, a lot of times you're, you can make your opponent scared of the Lictor's ability to come in and tie up units that they don't want them to. Even if the Lictor comes in and charges a unit and doesn't kill anything, and even if there's a chance that they'll get killed on the swing back, if you do end up engaging that unit in your opponent's movement phase, you can force them to fall back, you can force them to shoot into melee, you can put them in all sorts of really obnoxious situations that they're then going to have to revise their game plan to play around. And that's one of the biggest strengths of the Lictor is that even in those situations where it's not actively scoring you VPs, it can be mucking with your opponent's game plan. So with that, let's move on to the final verdict. Are Lictors worth taking? And the answer at this point, I think it should be relatively obvious, is absolutely yes. <laughs> Lictors are one of the most important models in the Tyranid range right now. They're so good for those secondaries. They're cheap. They can fill out your list. They can just provide so many small utility benefits and even fight if they need to. There's just basically no way to go wrong with Lictors. Now, what I remember from my time reading the Warhammer 40k lore was that Lictors were originally supposed to be sort of an assassin type, phenotype in the Tyranid army. They would like show up ahead of a high fleet and like yes, to kill all of your leadership or something. It seems like lately, Gene Stealers and Gene Stealer cults and Dimacarons have sort of filled that space. And what's interesting, I think, about Lictors, and one of the reasons that they're a lot of people's favorite is the idea of this like, sort of silent, invisible hunter that's stalking its prey and, and picking it off, which is a, a very evocative idea, but one, not one that is particularly represented by the data sheet. It seems like Lictors nowadays, and especially mechanically, are more like a scout unit, which feels more appropriate to them and is an important role that Tyranids should have on the battlefield. It's not a particularly sexy unit, but I think that very well encapsulates what Lictors are going to be doing on the table. They fill a lot of important support roles. They do a lot of very technical things, but killing is not 100% their strong suit. You'd have to entirely overhaul what the data sheet looked like in order for that unit to fill that role. 
And honestly, I don't know if it would even work quite that well. So I do think that the Lictor fills the perfect role in the Tyranid Army right now. It works really well with 9th edition's mechanics, and I think that it's just an, a phenomenal unit. One of the best units in Tyranids, for sure. Anyway, that's all I have to say about Lictors. Real quick video for this data sheet deep dive, everybody. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Hope you enjoyed. And remember, if you want to support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash tactical tortoise. You get all sorts of sweet benefits if you support there or down below at the channel membership link. I love everybody who does either of those things. Y'all are great. Remember to keep it classy, folks, and have happy wargaming.